நாங்கள் இன்றைக்கி ரிசோர்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் சாலிட் ஒர்க்ஸ்லேருந்து என்ன பண்ணோன்னா எங்களோட புது ப்ராடக்ட் சாலிட் ஒர்க்ஸ் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ப்ராடக்ட் லான்ச் பண்ணுறோம் இந்த ப்ராடக்டில் வந்து ஆல்ரெடி வந்து இருபது வருஷமாக எல்லா இன்ஜினியர்ஸும் அந்த ப்ராடக்ட் யூஸ் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்காங்க அவங்களோட டெய்லி யூஸ்க்கு ஃபார் டிசைன் பண்ணுறதுக்காக இது ஸ்பெசிஃபிக்காக இந்த வருஷம் வந்து நாங்கள் ஒரு புது ப்ராடக்ட் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் அது வந்து த்ரீடி எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் டாட் ஒர்க்ஸ் அப்படிங்கிற கான்செப்டு அது எதுக்குன்னா இப்போ வந்து சாலிட் ஒர்க்ஸ் ப்ராடக்ட் வந்து இவ்வளோ நல்லா யூஸ் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க இது வந்து ஒரு நியூ டெக்னாலஜியை நாங்கள் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் இந்த நியூ டெக்னாலஜி யூஸ் பண்ணி நீங்கள் எங்கே வேணால் ஒர்க் பண்ணலாம் வந்து டெஸ்க்டாப் தான் தேவையில்லை உங்களோட மொபைல் டிவைசஸ் இன்டர்நெட் டிவைசஸில் கூட டிசைன்லாம் பண்ண ஆரம்பிக்கலாம் ஸோ அந்த இது இந்த வருஷம் நாங்கள் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் ஸோ அதுதான் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி மேஜர் ஹைலைட்ஸ் அது இல்லாமல் சாலிட் ஒர்க்ஸ் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டிலேயே நிறைய நியூ ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் ஆட் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அது வந்து என்ஜினியர்ஸை ஹெல்ப் பண்ணுறதுக்கு இன்னும் ஃபாஸ்ட்டாக டிசைன் பண்ணுறதுக்கு பெட்டராக டிசைன் பண்ணுறதுக்கு ஸோ அந் அந்த ஹோல் கான்செப்டில் தான் இன்றைக்கி இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் இது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா எஜுகேஷன் சைடில் வந்து நாங்கள் நிறையா ஒர்க் பண்ணுறோம் எப்படி எப்படி பண்ணுறோன்னா ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ்க்கு நாங்கள் வந்து லைசன்சஸ் ஃப்ரீயாக கொடுப்போம் எப்போ எப்படி ஃப்ரீயாக கொடுப்போன்னா நிறையா டிசைன் காம்படிஷனில் க கலந்துக்கும் போது அவங்களுக்கு அந்த லைசன்ஸ் கொடுப்போம் அது என்ன ஹெல்ப் பண்ணணும்னா அவங்களுக்கு ப்ராடக்ட்டை லேர்ன் பண்ண அலோ பண்ணும் ஒரு டீமாக ஒர்க் பண்ணுறதுக்கு அவங்களுக்கு ஈஸியாக இருக்கும் அதுக்கப்புறம் காலேஜ் விட்டு வெளில வரும்போது ஒரு கம்பெனியில் போய் ஜாயின் பண்ணாங்கன்னா அதே டிசைன் அதே டெக்னாலஜி யூஸ் பண்ணி அவங்க ஒர்க் பண்ண முடியும் அவங்க ஃப்யூச்சருக்கு ரொம்ப யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் இப்போ என்ன பண்ணுறோம்னா இப்போ இதெல்லாம் வந்து இன்ஜினியரிங் எல்லாம் வந்து காலேஜ் ஒரு பதினாறு வயசு பதினேழு வயசு பதினெட்டு வயசில் ஜாயின் பண்ணுறாங்க ஸோ அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் இன்னும் யங் குழந்தைங்களுக்கு ஒரு அஞ்சு வயசுலேருந்து பத்து வயசு இருக்கிறவங்களுக்கு ஆப் ஃபார் கிட்ஸ் அப்படின்னு ஒரு ப்ராடக்ட் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் அதில் என்னென்னா இப்போ நீங்கள் வந்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா சின்ன குழந்தைங்கள்லாம் முதல்லலாம் இந்த களிமண்ணை வச்சு நிறையா இது பண்ணுவாங்க கரெக்டுங்களா அதில் எல்லாம் டி டிசைன் பண்ணுற மாதிரி பண்ணுவாங்க வேறு வேறு டிசைனாக ஓகே அதே மாதிரி இந்த ஆப் ஃபார் ஃபிட்ஸை வச்சு நீங்கள் பண்ணலாம் கம்ப்யூட்டர் யூஸ் பண்ணி ஸோ அதையும் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் இன்றைக்கி ஸோ இப்போ பார்த்தீங்கன்னா சின்ன குழந்தைங்கள்லேருந்து ஒரு டிசைனுக்கு ஒரு ஆர்வம் கிரியேட் பண்ணி அப்படியே அவங்களோட ஃப்யூச்சரை எப்படி செக்யூர் பண்ணுறது எப்படி யூஸ்ஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் ஸோ அதுதான் இந்த ஹோல் ஜேர்னியை கிரியேட் பண்ணுறோம் ஸோ இது ஒரு பார்ட் இன்னொன்று வந்து இப்போ வந்து இந்தியாவில் வந்து நிறையா புது புது ஸ்டார்ட் அப் கம்பெனிஸ் வந்து ஓகே ஸோ இந்த ஸ்டார்ட் அப் கம்பெனிஸ்லாம் வரும்போது அவங்களுக்கு வந்து பணம் தேவைப்படும் இப்போ ஒரு சாஃப்ட்வேர் வாங்கணும் இப்போ எங்கள் சாஃப்ட்வேராக வாங்கணும்னா பணம் வேணும் இந்த பணம் வந்து ஈஸியாக இருக்காது ஒரு கம்பெனி ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணணும் ஸோ இப்போ நாங்கள் ஒரு ஸ்டார்ட் அப் ப்ரோக்ராம் வச்சுருக்கோம் அது எப்படின்னா ஒரு கம்பெனி ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுறாங்க அவங்க வராங்க அவங்க என்ன பண்ணலாம்னா எங்கள் 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 வெப்சைட்டில் போய் அப்ளை பண்ணலாம் நாங்கள் ஒரு ஸ்டார்ட் அப் கம்பெனி எங்களுக்கு வந்து இந்த டெக்னாலஜி வேணும் சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஸோ உடனே வந்து அது ஒரு ப்ராசஸில் போயிட்டு ஃபைனலாக வரும் எங்கள் அப்ரூவ் வந்து நாங்கள் அப்ரூவ் பண்ணிடுவோம் ஸோ எப்படின்னா ஃப்ரீ சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஃபார் என்டர்பிரனர்ஸ் புதுசாக கம்பெனி ஆரம்பிக்கிறவங்களுக்கு அவங்களுக்கு சாஃப்ட்வேர் அவைலபிளாக இருக்கும் அவங்க வந்து அதை பே பண்ண தேவை இல்லை ஸோ அது வந்து ஒரு சர்டன் பீரியட் ஆஃப் டைம் ஓகே ஒரு ஒன் இயர் இருக்கும் அப்புறம் திருப்பி ரிவ்யூ பண்ணிட்டு அவங்க என்ன ஸ்டேஜில் இருக்காங்க இப்போ வந்து அவங்க வந்து ப்ராடக்ட் வந்துருச்சா அவங்க விற்க ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டாங்களா அதை செக் பண்ணிட்டு அதை எக்ஸ்டெண்ட் பண்ணுவோம் ஸோ அது இந்த ஃபீச்சர் வந்து நாங்கள் லாஸ்ட் இயரே இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணோம் இப்போ பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு நூற்றி முப்பத்தஞ்சு கம்பெனி இந்தியாவில் வந்து அதை யூஸ் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க ஒரு முந்நூறு அப்ளிகேஷன் வந்தது ஏன்னா நிறையா வந்து நிறையா பேர் அப்ளை பண்ணுவாங்க பட் ஏன்னா எலிஜிபிலிட்டிலாம் பார்த்து நாங்கள் அப்ளை பண்ணுவோம் ஸோ ஒரு நூற்றி முப்பத்தஞ்சு கம்பெனி அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் என்ன பண்ணுறோன்னா இன்க்யூபேஷன் சென்டர்ஸில் இருக்குது இப்போ காலேஜஸ்லாம் போனீங்கன்னா அங்கே வந்து காலேஜஸே வந்து இன்க்யூபேஷன் சென்டர் செட் பண்ணுவாங்க அங்கே வந்து கம்பெனி உள்ளே ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணி அங்கே யூஸ் ஸோ அதனால் நாங்கள் என்ன பண்ணோம் ஒரு முப்பத்தஞ்சு இன்க்யூபேஷன் சென்டர் இருக்குது காலேஜ் மட்டும் இல்லாமல் ப்ரைவேட் இன்க்யூபேஷன் சென்டர் கூட சைன் அப் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் சைன் அப் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் என்னென்னா அவங்களுக்கு நாங்கள் வந்து சாஃப்ட்வேராக கொடுத்துருவோம் அந்த இன்க்யூபேஷன் சென்டர் இருக்குது ஃப்ரீயாக
ஸோ அதுதான் இப்போ கரெக்டாக இருக்கு இன்னும் ஸ்கூல் லெவலில் நாங்கள் நாங்கள் இவ்வளோ டைம் பண்ணல ஸோ இது எப்படி போகாதுன்னு பார்த்து அதுக்கு வருது கவர்மெண்டோட சேர்ந்து ஏதோ பண்ற மாதிரி பிளான் இருக்கா ஆல்ரெடி ஏதோ பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க கூட ஆல்ரெடி இப்போ எல்லாமே டிஜிட்டலைஸ்ட் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க ஆமா ஃபுல் சோர்ட் கூட என்கேஜ்னா ஓகே மெயின்லி த்ரூ காலேजेस தான் பண்றோம் இல்லேனா நீங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னா கவர்மெண்ட் ஏதா புரோகிராம்ஸ் வந்தாங்கனா அந்த புரோகிராம் மூலமா நாங்க ஸ்ட்ரைட்டா போய் நாங்க கவர்மெண்ட்ல डायरेक्टली கவர்மெண்ட் ஆபீஷியல்ஸ் கூட எல்லாம் பட் அந்த மூலமா வர ஃபண்ட்ஸ் வரது எந்த தர காலேஜ் வரது என்ன வந்து எப்படி ஹெல்ப் பண்ணோம் பண்ணுவாங்க <laughs> 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 we have been back here again in chennai and this time with solid works so as uh, you understand our company some of you who have written on us in the past so underneath the dassault systems umbrella we have 12 different brands so you would have seen and heard other brands in the past but here we are talking about our alush brand in the cad segment which is solid works and we are we are market leaders uh, in this space in the, in the cad industry worldwide and also in india So we're going to be talking for the next one hour about what is new with SolidWorks 2020. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about engineering because the foundation of the brand and foundation of our company is into engineering and into new product development. So we're going to be talking about that. And and you know to further discuss more about it, I would invite PM Ravi Kumar, uh, PMR as he's known more uh, in the fraternity. He he heads the uh, professional channel business, which is the SolidWorks in India, and he will take you through the rest of the proceedings for the day with our global speakers and customers. And one important thing which we have seen from the last two years is uh, there was a video which was running or or some slides running on our customers. So in the last couple of years, what we have seen the kind of customers that we have got, uh, they are now coming and talking about the way they have been engaging with. with our different brands and the 3D experience platform so thank you for uh, coming here and without further thing really i would invite pmr to take it over from here thank you my name is uh, pm roy kumar uh, he made it difficult by saying i take care of professional solutions let's make it simple i manage solid works in india it, that's that's the easiest way to put it across okay So first let me thank all the press and media who are here thanks for taking your time and coming down uh for the launch of solid works uh, 2020 product. Uh next I want to welcome a uh, few of our guests who have come here uh from our corporate office and also from our customer base. So first let me introduce you uh Mr. Suchit Jain. Uh Suchit uh, is Vice President Strategy and uh, Business Development. Uh, he sits out of our corporate office in Waltham, and uh, for the last, I think, every year, he has been uh, accommodative to come down for the uh, every year SolidWorks launch. Okay, and thank you for that, Suchit. Uh, next is uh, Mary Blanchard. Uh, Mary Blanchard is Director of Education uh, with SolidWorks, and. Uh, Me and Mary go a very long way in terms of associating with each other. It's as 
told us, I think if I remember 2006, uh, is the first time that we got to introduce ourselves. And uh, that was a visit. She came to India to, to assess you know, Indian education and how it is. And uh, she has really helped me transforming India into a big education hub with reference to SolidWorks. Uh, then let me talk about three most important people who are here. And uh, I, I really thank all the three of them. First is uh, uh, Mr. Harish Radhakrishnan from Vaya Life Private Limited. Uh, I don't want to talk more about it. I think I'll allow Harish to talk about his company and what they do. Uh, but they are doing things which are look simple, but actually when you experience it, it it's totally different. Okay. So you'll hear uh, Harish. Thank you very much, Harish, for coming down. Uh, next, I wanted to thank uh, Ms. Sanskriti Dewale. And uh, she is an young entrepreneur. Okay, and uh, probably one of the youngest in the group here. Uh, uh, and what she is doing is amazing. Okay, she is actually enabling people to learn, and that too, enabling specially able people to learn. I mean, that's what uh, uh, she is doing, and uh, you will hear her talk about it. And then I want to talk an academician who is all, uh, who is here, uh, Dr. Arun Matthew. Uh, from Bellur Institute of Technology. I don't think I need to introduce VIT. Uh, they are one of the oldest private university and probably the largest university uh, here in India, having a campus at multiple locations. Uh, thank you very much to all three of you uh, to come down. Uh, with that, uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to take more time. So can we play the SolidWorks 2020 launch video, please? So that's a messaging from our uh, CEO. Ciao everyone, and welcome to what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2020. I am Gianpaolo Bassi, CEO of SOLIDWORKS. Every year, we hear from thousands of SOLIDWORKS users, users like you, and we get amazing ideas, insights, and requests for what's next. So of course we listen, we listen very closely, and then we deliver. Over this past year, you have told us you want full digital continuity, a seamless process that takes you from design to manufacturing faster than ever. You want the freedom to innovate more, and you want to work with increasingly precise simulation to reduce the risks of product failure. So we got our marching orders, and we acted on them. And we are absolutely thrilled with what's new for 2020. It's all about digitalization and integration through a connected 3D experience platform to drive faster innovation while reducing the risk of failure. In SolidWorks 2020, you'll find three main ways we are giving you the solutions you truly want and need. First, the 3D experience platform will deliver to you a connected design to manufacturing ecosystem, helping you manage every aspect of developing and delivering products, from ideation into the hands of your customers. You go from concept to completed product with unprecedented speed, and you do it easily and seamlessly with new and connected applications, both on the desktop and the cloud. We are delivering improved performance across the spectrum for stunning speed and unparalleled functionality. And finally, we are giving you streamlined workflows to accelerate time to market and reduce manufacturing costs, all while improving product quality. Get ready to dive in, discover and get inspired by SolidWorks 2020. So what you will uh, be hearing and we, you will be hearing from us and our team talking about SolidWorks 2020. And uh, another important thing is from today, I mean, in the next uh, couple of days, you will see events happening across India, close to 54 events uh, covering more than 8,000 people where we are going to have our resellers who will be uh, launching SolidWorks uh, 2020 with our flagship event name called Innovation Day. Uh, with that, uh, can I have Suchit Jain, Vice President Strategy and Business Development, SolidWorks, who will talk about engineers and what SolidWorks has done for engineers. Thanks, Thank you. 
Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Fine. We're having some. Uh, do I? Have okay. So my name is Sachin Jain, as PMR said. Uh, you know, of course, uh, I grew up in India. I come here every year for the SolarWorks launch. Uh, is it the? Okay. So I wanted to just quickly. I, I put this uh, slide together up because. You know, we are way here in Chennai, and I grew up in uh, very north of India in a small town called Dehradun. How many of you are familiar with Dehradun? Well, you all of us are familiar, but if you get a chance, go up there. And if you notice, I tried to put little towers everywhere. So this is the clock tower in Dehradun, which is kind of the, the famous place. But so I grew up there, uh, you know, till 88, and then I went to Mumbai. I was there for four years in uh, IIT Pawai. Uh, this is where I started my engineering career. My background is finite element analysis, if you're familiar with it. It's for structural analysis, so I did a lot of that. Um, I ended up in the earthquake. Uh, in fact, I studied earthquakes in Los Angeles, and if you guys have heard of the Northridge earthquake in 1994, I was in Los Angeles at that time, and since I was studying earthquakes a little bit, we were sent to do this ambient testing while the earthquake was still coming in. So I remember I have pictures from, uh, uh, from this Holiday Inn, which was broken down. People had just run over. And we were students, you know, master's students. Uh, uh, the life is not important for you guys. I mean, for us at that time, so we go, go up on the seventh floor and do some ambient testing. So that was Los Angeles. Uh, I, I was in Los Angeles for quite a few years, uh, and then uh, I lived in Paris. The so Systems is, uh, is uh, uh, in Paris is where our headquarters are. The uh, so Systems is a parent company, French company. Uh, probably a lot of you know Dassault, Dassault from the Dassault Aviation, the planes and so on. But also all those planes are designed in Dassault Systems uh, software. So this is where I was for nearly five years, and then. When I go, went back, I went to Boston. So PMR said uh, corporate office is in Watham. Watham is a, is a suburb, if you will, uh, near, uh, near Boston or in Boston. And in fact, uh, you've heard of Silicon Valley? Everybody here, Silicon Valley, yes? San Francisco area. Boston was the original, say, it was not the valley, but Boston, the Route 128, where our headquarters is, was the original uh, Silicon valley, if you will, not a valley, but uh, where actually the computers really came about, the IC chips. And I'm going to talk about it. Anyway, that's a little bit about me. Before I go into the 2020, I want to kind of tell you as, as corporate, as the so system, the solid works, what do we think about and where, where our priorities are? And I think it's important as we talk about 2020. So engineering, you know, as uh, Shantanu talked about it, PMR talked about it, engineering is in our blood uh, a little bit as a company. And engineering, as you guys all know, is about solving uh, big problems. And you know, we're having great ideas. We have some examples of that. So I want to take you through a little bit of a quick history, uh, you know, starting from industrial revolution, industrial age, if you will. And at the top, you see kind of the different ages, as you would say, and then uh, what's happening in engineering. But if you remember, well, if you have read about it in 1700s and so on, Industrial Revolution 1, 2, starting from the steam engine to the first flight in 1903, uh, the Wright brothers uh, did. A lot of the engineering was done sort of on paper. Uh, and it, you know, some of the major industrial age innovations happened uh, during that period, right? So 200 years. But then uh, a lot of what probably a lot of you remember, I remember, we grew up uh, in the digital age. Uh, and this is up on the left here, this, this little thing is talking about 3D CAD actually, or, or not 3D CAD, but really CAD, was this gentleman, a French uh, 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 mathematician, Bézier, who, who sort of is credited in 1965 starting CAD. And CAD allowed to, to do stuff digitally. And it propelled engineering to do a whole lot more. And then we had the, you know, we've had the, the, the modern planes, as you will. Uh, and the so systems came about at that time as well. And it squeezed the number of engineering years, you know. So in 30 years, we achieved quite a bit uh, in the digital age. I mean, you had flying planes, and uh, we had a lot of things going on. 
and of course computer helped so from paper we moved into uh, into into the computers and we started to drawings and other things and then if you think about information age you know sort of the computer revolutions uh, around in 1965 uh, so on you know the the, the Moore's law came about, right? The IC chips getting smaller and smaller, so uh, you could fit in so much of information on, uh, uh, onto smaller and smaller computers. So smartphones came about, and today we talk about uh, you know, the sort of the automation, automated cars. Uh, and engineering moved along nicely because it came. You you start to do multi physics, so not just sort of graphical design. But you also start to do sort of virtually create the product so that you can do structural tests. You know, just whatever will happen in field in the actual life of a product, you could do on the computer and simulate all of that. And today, I'd say, you know, I, I just put in the number of 2015, we're calling it the automation age, where every everywhere you turn around, you hear about artificial intelligence. A couple of years ago, I, IoT was the big thing, big data, all of those kinds of things. And what it simply meant, or it means to us, is that the data is getting connected. You can do so much more if all the data, whatever you're doing, is all in one place, because you can do data mining, you can make some intelligence out of it, connect it, use artificial intelligence, all of that. So the data has to be connected and people also have to be connected. You know, one of the main things which I always talk about the, is the human part of it because in all these technologies, technology moves faster and people are left behind. But if they're connected, if the information is there with everybody, then people can catch up with the technology and it's not only for the few, right? So the massive way really, technology is available to everybody, not just, uh, you know, the people who are only, only going to uh, you know, big colleges or big companies, it's available to everybody. And for to do all of that, to connect this digital, both the data and the people, you do need some sort of a platform. And this is why, you know, for us, Engineering 4.0, if you will, or the, the version of Industry 4.0 for us as a company is really what we will call as 3D experience platform, and you're gonna hear more about it. So it's really, in very simplistically, it's kind of this automation age connecting people and data together on a single platform. That's our sort of a payback to engineering through the 3D experience platform. So exponential change, right? We talked a lot about it from first flight in 1903, right, brothers, to landing on the moon in 1969, 66 years, right? A lot of technology changes happened. This is, anybody can take a guess as what, what, what's on the left hand side, anybody? 1965. It's a computer, right? It's called PDP-8. Yeah. Size of a refrigerator in those days it costed eighteen thousand dollars, which is close to you know one hundred and eighty thousand if you were to buy it today. Today you can buy an Apple Watch, you know, the version five. Anybody has a version five of Apple Watch? No, not yet. Uh, has much more power, a few hundred dollars, right? So in fifty years, technology moves, right? And a lot of it is because things are getting smaller, becoming cheaper, affordable, all of that. Now, there's something which happens in this world which is beyond this economics as well. Not everything is about getting cheaper. A lot of engineering and the jobs people are gonna do is not just about economics and everything getting cheaper. Those are there, absolutely. But there's something beyond economics. There are things happening which sort of uh, cause uh, uh, a concern about the survival, if you will, as, as humans. Uh, so UN, United Nations, has come up with these 17 grand challenges for the human race, if you will. Uh, clean water, et cetera, sustainability. So I've tried to club them into these four big categories. Sustainability, so you know you have cleaner methods of energy production. There are others in there, but I put one of them, so solar, wind. Uh, nuclear, etc. This is across everywhere across the world. Those challenges are coming in. Security, because you know, as you are connected on a single platform or on, on different places, there are a lot of cyber threats. And there are a lot of devices, so that's becoming an important part. You know, no matter what we do, you know, world is not a utopian society. There are people who want to move ahead of others, so cybersecurity becomes important. Health, 
of course, uh, uh, you know, access to clean water, uh, diseases, uh, a lot of stuff happening in medicine, and then quality of life. And you know, you, in India, especially, you hear a lot about smart cities and uh, modernizing the infrastructure is very important, and it improves quality of life, right? So no matter whether you're very well off or you know not not so much, you have to travel through the same infrastructure. So if you can make everything better, it kind of goes. So, so when we, so it's sort of bringing it back. So I'm talking about engineering. I'm talking about what, what motivates uh, for us to create jobs and the types of problems we're going to solve with economics, without, uh, beyond economics. Our belief at Dassault Systems is that the, the virtual world can extend the real world. So whatever you see physically, that you can do all these virtual things because it will extend your thinking, your innovation, to help solve these problems. And, and, and the, the new world is about, uh, for, for anybody who's a little bit into math, uh, the idea here is that the, the gap between the real and the virtual is reducing. To solve these engineering problems, if we can reduce this gap, you know, if we had this magic uh, remote control and when you had a concept in mind and boom, you can uh, uh, get to a product fast, those you know, as whether it's economics or beyond economics, we need those kinds of things in there. And digital, doing things in virtual can help you get there faster and faster. So that's our belief. This is what we are motivated motivated by. And at SolidWorks, as you saw, we have over six million users now doing these kinds of things, right? So they're in all industries, uh, from consumer products to industrial machinery and all of that. Now, a lot of the six million, more than half of these are in education. So this is the workforce of the future, right? Uh, so SolarWorks has a lot of that. And as a company now, you heard John Pollard talk about 2020. When we look at SolidWorks within the big uh, Dassault ecosystem, within the bigger of this engineering ecosystem, our priorities is, are A, build on this exponential technology line. I'm going to touch upon that. Exponential technology, such as what has happened in the 66 years of going from, you know, uh, first flight to uh, to landing a moon or, or taking the big computer and putting it down on the on, on your eye on your uh, uh, iWatch Apple watch these are exponential technologies and we want to make sure that we can deliver those to our customers package inside our tools so we can do more uh, of course engaging with the workforce of the future I've talked about it over three million of our uh, customers are in the education, these are students, and then, uh, of course, foster entrepreneurship and innovation because that's the future. So let, let's touch upon very quickly on each one of these things. Uh, I'm going to touch upon a few of the technologies which we are working on. One is additive. Uh, you know, you must be living under a rock if you've not uh, heard of 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing in, from, from plastics to metal is becoming more and more popular. And, and today, more and more, that gap to zero or going from virtual to real, uh, 3D printing makes it happen, at least in the prototyping phase right now. 3D printing has not come to the full-fledged manufacturing when you want to do you know, millions of parts. But when you're doing just concept testing, uh, 3D printing is coming. There are a lot of things happening around 3D printing. I'm not going to go into details right now. Uh, there are exponential technologies which we work on which bring the multi-physics uh, into, into play. This is where you're combining different physical domains into one because the world is connected. You know, the products and the life and everything is sort of connected. So we have things here you see examples of car and the fluid flow and the ergonomic design. You're seeing a heart in there where you can do life science because if you can have a virtual model of your heart, you can do a, so much study and not just the virtual model of the heart, but your heart. Right, so if you go to a doctor tomorrow and they know how your heart is, and if there are some complications, they can actually do that and study well. So that's where the world is going, right? Connecting all of these together. By the way, back up here, uh, I'm obviously not going to back. I wanted to point out one of the gentlemen in the picture. We do a lot of work. Uh, not sure why it's not playing. Yep, there we go. So augmented virtual reality, I think there's an example set up here too. This is another one of those things which is reducing the gap between the real and the uh, uh, and the virtual. Uh, PMR, talk, actually Shantanu, you talked about the experiences. You know, it's very important. Uh, 
And when we talk about this reducing the, the limit going between real and virtual to zero, I've made the gap between a concept to reality. And then connected ecosystem, as I mentioned earlier, it's about connecting people and data. So all of those are there in the SolarWorks platform at uh, SolarWorks 2020, and then connecting it to 3D experience is our priority. Let me quickly touch upon the workforce of the future. Remember, I talked about three priorities we had. Exponential technologies, we talked about 3dexperience.works, and we talked about SolarWorks 2020. Let's talk about you know, workforce of the future. This is an important slide. Whether you agree with everything exactly 65% or not, this is important that everything which kids are studying right now, so a kid entering in the primary school, you know, first grade, second grade, third grade, by the time they graduate from high school, so in 10 years or so, they will end up in a job which does not exist today. Whether you agree it, whether it's 10 years or 15 years, we all know that that's where we are going, right? So how do we prepare students for jobs which they, they, are not, they may not be doing tomorrow? So of course the education has to be broader and has to be inclusive and all of that. So our goal, our priority is engage with tomorrow today. You know, how do we engage with students to teach them what's happening? You know, and these are just some examples, pictures of, uh, of kids we've been working in. As I said, we have over 3 million and it starts. And Marie is actually going to touch upon uh, more on that. Uh, actually, that's very interestingly, that's Daniel uh, Boyer on the Marie knows her, uh, uh, who's been doing a lot of work in, around engineering. So we, we do that. We do our part on that. Uh, the third priority I talked about was the entrepreneurship and innovation, and we have good examples up here, and they're gonna, they, they, they will talk about this. Um, by the way, this is, this is RV. I have one of these in our office. This is out of Pasadena, California, and sometimes they don't let me write it too much because you know, it becomes a legal challenge for them if I fall or something, but it's a last mile, uh, last mile challenge uh, problem. Uh, so this is, so last year when I was here, we talked about SolidWorks for Entrepreneurs in India. We launched this program, if you will, uh, and this is just sort of a report card I'm reporting back to you guys, uh, if you will. We have over, during that period, we have over 300 applications on it. I believe uh, 135, 135. Yeah. is that correct? 130. So, so 135 startups are part of the program, and, and the program is very simple, you know, we, we believe that uh, we want to make those startups successful and you know money is the hardest thing at that point and that's the last thing the startup should be worrying about because they have to do the innovation etc so we try to make it a little easier so we provide our whole portfolio of products at no cost to startups uh, for a year and then we evaluate and but more than the product I'd say we also provide the connections and the network and I have so many examples of how we do that where we can help connect with manufacturers or other uh, and, uh, entrepreneurs, or even sometimes the VC money, uh, which is uh, needed there. But here is uh, showing some examples of it. Of course, uh, you know your example is there as well. Uh, and it's showing in India. I, I think the VC money is now start to come in. Private money, government was always doing a lot of stuff in India, uh, but more private money is now coming in. So I think there will be more and more of that's happening. What we see, a lot of our applications are coming from regions here in Bangalore area, Delhi area, and so on. Uh, so you see some of that. Uh, another aspect of this entrepreneurship is what's happening across the world with the Fab Labs. And I call it solving local problems with global help, right? Uh, providing means of solving these problems in the local place where you may not have had means before to do it. And Fab Labs are he helping you do that. Uh, we work with the Fab Foundation from MIT uh, quite a bit. They have 1,600 Fab Labs across the world, quite a few in India. In fact, I was mentioning in Kerala, they're gonna launch a super Fab Lab. There's Fab Labs everywhere. So we work with them uh, over years. We have put Fab Labs, like the ones we sponsor, not, not only we work with all the Fab Labs and provide them with the software, but we also work in the ecosystem to provide this Fab Lab. We have done one in Bhutan, actually. Imar, you were there. Uh, we're going to do one in Nepal uh, on a humanitarian thing uh, in uh, March, 
March or April next year. Uh, we've done one in Rwanda. Uh, this one is pretty interesting because we launched it in 2014 and tremendous work has already gone in, so it's sparking a whole innovation system there. Uh, and then we put one in uh, Port of Williams in the northern, uh, southernmost tip of the world uh, in the Patagonia area. And before I get started, how much time do I have? Eight. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Good. Um, so I'm Harish Krishnan with Vaya. Um, most of us, uh, or most of you, uh, uh, know us as a lunchbox company, but that's the first product we launched in EPT. And um, uh, to take a little bit about the history and where I'm from and what I do at Vaya. Uh, so I'm, I'm a born and brought up in Chennai. Uh, and I worked as a chassis engineer designing braking systems, actually, for Ashok Leyland. And then I, I moved on to the United States to do my master's and um, worked there for a couple of years, again on braking systems, and uh, moved to Germany before coming to uh, India. So you all might be curious like what a brake engineer is actually uh, doing with a consumer products company. But uh, as we go, you will know what it's about. Um, so the, the path or the journey started way back in 2014 uh, with me and my friend um, sitting in a Starbucks uh, in, in California um, trying to figure out what product to do first and, 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 and of course I had a, a question to him because it, it was his idea to actually go with a lunchbox uh, than any other product. We had a good discussion and then said okay let, let, why not let's give it a try because for a long time um, um, we both grew in India and we've seen Milton and other lunch boxes which are kind of like round and did not change shape over a long period of time. So okay then it was a, it was a decision, we, we, we went ahead with it. And finally we launched in India in 2016. So there was about two years of uh, development that was happening um, while we were doing two jobs um, and trying to get some agencies helped with us and finally we established the brand, launched the brand and started the company in Chennai in 2016 of August. Since then the first flagship product for us was uh, the Tiffin and um, still it, it's, it's a big revenue generator for us and um, uh, we come up with, uh, we start with three or four variants but now I think um, 20 plus, uh, you could just take a look at our website for that. And a year ago, actually more than a year ago, we came with uh, this product called Drink. So our, our uh, USP is vacuum insulated uh, uh, products. Um, so one for uh, food, another for liquids. Doesn't mean that we would not do anything outside of vacuum insulation, but that's been our, uh, our USP and that's where we started. <coughs> and the third product in that, um, category is something like storage jars. The kind of the, uh, the, the good thing about these are, uh, you could stack them up and you could actually have one hot and one cold. Whereas in a lunch box, uh, you cannot mix them up. You just will ruin your food by doing that. And last month actually, we, we launched two new products. Again, something like a vacuum insulated tumbler, which, is, which you could use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, serving for your gas or at home or even for individual use. And then completely different altogether is a, a Bluetooth low energy based tracking device. For all the forgetful people out there, uh, it will help you um, to track your keys, wallets and, and any kind of thing that you attach it to. So that's a little bit about the products we have and launched in the market. Some of the um, key um, attributes are the materials we choose are of the highest quality for the function. And our products are more aspirational, so we, we, we pay more emphasis on the aesthetics part. And um, 
the brake engineer in me uh, um, is um, focusing too much, or I would be focusing too much um, in my day-to-day -day work on the so-called vacuum therm technology. So it's nothing but vacuum insulation, but the amount of vacuum, how we maintain it, and how it's been um, um, held in the product is the key. So that's our patented vacuum therm technology out there. We started with Indian market um, in 2016, and after like eight months into, into the company uh, of making business in, in India, we got a lot of requests from USA um, and also Middle East. So in 2018, if I'm not wrong, um, that's when we started our international operations. And since then, the journey has been great. Um, we are constantly adding new markets. And right now, it's about 16 countries that we sell. India remains our biggest market and our primary focus, too, and it will continue to be. Uh, and um, this month, actually, we've launched TV ads, too. So, um, yeah. So that's great news. Hope it drives the sales up, too. <laughs> so this is about the company, um, what, we, what we products we have, and, and uh, where we operate. So the next section is where I'm going to talk about uh, what goes into making via products and how we integrate SolidWorks. And, and how it's been helpful. The entire literacy platform, all of the work that we're doing, we want to make sure it is, it delivers outcomes for the people that use it. Because again, Braille literacy is a tool, it's, it's a means to an end. And that end is independence, that end is employability, that end is active participation of disabled people in society. And literacy, literacy rates of 1% with living in practically a medieval era of happy where we don't know wh what the world is like when disabled people participate equally. And we believe that Annie is the first step to seeing that future. Um, I think the world was a very different place when, uh, let's say, there was a 1% literacy rate among women. Or the world was a very different place when, uh, you know, in general, the literacy was low because literacy is the foundational step to, part of the, to employment participation in society. And I feel we're, we're just yet to see that. Uh, because we as a society have not evolved enough to uh, be inclusive enough. So we, we as a team at Thinkable Labs want our technology uh, and our hardware and software to be the first step in building that future and building that vision where what, what does society look like when disabled people participate equally. And the onus is on us really. That's about us. And I'll be happy to talk to uh, anybody. Uh, later, if you want to know more. And I'd like to say a couple of words with respect to SolidWorks and itself. I was mentioning to a few people earlier. Uh, the fact that uh, you guys have had a massive focus on education means a lot to us because uh, as as a startup that, that was, uh, you know, that was, that was conceptualized in college, the tools that we use during those phases of design and innovation still continue to support us. And in that way, I think SolidWorks really uh, is a front runner in terms of nurturing the ecosystem because those are the tools that you learn how to design with, those are the tools that you learn how to uh, model with and that continues being a part of your professional life even after you're out of college. And I really thank the whole team for uh, supporting us right from 2014 while we were in college and we hope to be continue, we hope to continue to translate these tools and our work into real world impact outcomes. Thank you very much. The way we nurture uh, at the kids' level or at the engineering level or at the school level to start using our technology. So uh, one of the person who is engaged in that, she herself has been a teacher before she joined uh, uh, us in 2006. Uh, and later I'll invite uh, Mary Planchard to talk about SolidWorks in academics and what we are doing. Mary. Thank you. About 26 hours to get here. After Harish and Sanskriti's presentation, I feel like I could go home because they are what I dreamed about, both of you. And I'm going to tell you why. It's true that PMR introduced me to amazing, amazing educational institutions in India 
In fact, I'm back in Chennai after many years because I originally judged what was the Akruti design competition years ago with just a couple of schools that has turned out to be a national competition now that I'll go back and judge in a couple of days. But I'm happy to announce to you today, and Shantanu will have some information, that we don't want to wait until college anymore. And to develop the workforce of the future, we cannot. So we're introducing apps for kids. It starts at age four to 14. And I'm sure everyone in this audience knows a kid. And can you imagine if that kid has tools that allow them to think in 3D, to express themselves? Apps for Kids is a cloud-based application. It's free. It's like digital clay. You can mold what you want. Uh, go to a 3D printer or print to paper. Because let's face it, most four-year-olds don't have a 3D printer in their house. I'm excited about that because we also have classroom associated with it that allows teachers to share this technology, this latest technology, with their students. Mechanisms for high voltage products. We have a design uh, breakers and earthen switches. I'm using SolidWorks. And I was dealing with my customers in Europe again to SolidWorks. And then when I get, got back to education, uh, I was teaching solid works, and uh, I am proud to say that VIT, we have 30,000 students, among which we have around uh, roughly 5,000 plus mechanical engineering students. And every single mechanical engineering student is introduced to solid works on day one. And uh, so they get to do the engineering drawing on solid works, and the very, very second semester they are introduced to part modeling, assemblies, and drawing. So every BIT, if he is a mechanical engineer, knows solid works in and out. And I'm proud to say that you know, uh, as a researcher, I've used SolidWorks APIs for my research work in developing assembly sequences. So it's been 15 plus years I've been using this tool. And uh, in BIT, we look to the future. We have upgraded curriculums on a regular basis. We has a university where even the government has recognized as Institute of Eminence very recently. We have made sure that we are at par with the requirements of the industry. And so we just made sure that SolidWorks is enabled into the curriculum. So SolidWorks is not taught apart from the curriculum. It is based on the curriculum and it is embedded into the curriculum. And then of late, we have understood that industry is changing because of the IoT industry 4.0. We have started courses where we deal with cyber-physical systems. In fact, uh, next year, we will be launching courses in undergraduate level where we'll be into virtual reality. In fact, uh, when I talked about virtual reality last year, we integrated uh, VR systems with SolidWorks and a good job. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, SolidWorks uh, last year demonstrated this module to the customers, industry customers, uh, during the 2019 launch. So very many people were impressed and they got a feedback, sir, you are actually enabling the future generation to understand technology at a very early age. So I said, see, unless you tell us your requirements, we cannot train the next generation to the expectations. I'm actually very proud to see two entrepreneurs here. I teach new product development. Uh, and uh, you know, I have both boys and girls bring out a lot of innovations. So Braille, uh, I mean, which you had actually talked about, some students actually attempted. I think they have actually come, come across your website. And they started doing something very similar. But of course, it's not going to meet uh, the level where you are now. But yeah, people are opening up to uh, tools like this at a very early age. And I'm thankful to uh, a company like Resolve where you
you are enabling students to uh, innovate, express their views and ideas so that the other person, be it a peer, person in the industry, a researcher can understand what his mind is all about.